This is the MilSketch tutorial video. Using MilSketch you can create military operational diagrams fairly easily. When you want to create a new sketch you just go up to the new sketch menu option and select a background image to use. Normally you would probably be using a, uh, a map as a background image. I'm going to go ahead and select a, a road map from Germany. And uh, there's, <coughs> there's the road map. You get some information on the size of the of the image you're going to be using. This one is 2,000 pixels wide by uh, 1,000 pixels high and you can resize the image before you start drawing on it in this uh, new sketch options window. You can also add a border uh, in number of pixels at the top, bottom, left and right and select the border select the border color. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and create the sketch. There's the, the uh, sketch using the background as a starting point and there's two options for viewing the sketch. This is the zoom option so the the background image is always going to be zoomed to fit the window or you can go to a one-to-one -one mode where the the uh, image is shown uh, one pixel to one pixel on your screen and then when you resize it you can it, it continues to stay at one pixel by one pixel the way you move around on the images to use the is to use the uh, the scroll bar um, <clears throat> once you have a background image you can start drawing on it and there's a couple basic items that you would be drawing on your um, image and they are uh, symbols you normally unit symbols lines lines with text unit boundaries and you can add text annotations also so I'll start by adding a unit symbol and this is the unit symbol design window uh, and the way you select the symbol to start with is you click on the <clears throat> on the white picture box for what you're interested in setting. So the the white picture box down here in the center of this particular window is your is what you would use for your main unit symbol. So I'm going to click on that and then that brings up the sele symbol selector window and you see the different directories listed. There's about 18 di different directories corresponding to to uh, friendly images, enemy image, images, not known, neutral, NATO equipment, NATO equipment, no other than war items. And each of these has the symbol images in, in the directory. In total, there's over 2,500 different NATO symbols that are included with the program setup. So I'm going to start with Friendly Land 1. And you'll get a, what you'll get are the thumbnails of the different unit symbols that you can use as you can see there's there's about there's about 200 in fact what I can do is that you can make your symbol smaller if you want so go ahead and do that and you can see that all the all the different symbols and and that's that one directory alone uh, just as an example we can take a look at the at the enemy symbols enemy land symbols the enemy, enemy land one. There it goes. As a, there's your enemy land symbols. <clears throat> but going back to the friendly. friendly symbols. I'm, I'm just going to grab a symbol here and as you can see when I click on it it's automatically selected into the uh, symbol designer window. So let me move this out of the way here and that's your starting point for a symbol. If you want you can add a background image and modifiers. Uh, for example you, I'll set the modifier as the size of the unit. I'll set it as a company size unit. There's your modifier you can select another modifier. You can add, see the the task force uh, indicator, and then 
what you can do is set your colors. So for the symbol, I'd like to set my color as uh, blue. Change that to blue. Modifier, I'll, I'll also make that blue. The second modifier, I'll make that blue also. And then you can select the fill color. I'll make that cyan. So the fill color is cyan. And then you can add uh, left text, right text, and a bottom text. So uh, I'll get rid of the bottom text. And then the left, left text, I'll just put a 33. And then the right text, I will put to AD. And then you can, you can position the text using the scroll bar at the bottom so you can see the, there's a little left to right movement and the same thing on the other side little left to right movement by using that scroll bar and you can size it uh, with the scroll bar beneath that so I'll leave this size at about a hundred and I'll, I'll also change the color to make the text match as a blue by the way you can open a second symbol designer window so there I have two that way you could be working on uh, your en your enemy symbols in one designer or your friendly symbols uh, or series of symbols that are similar you can have multiple copies of that window open you can select your fonts uh, change your colors you can you can size the the, the unit symbol itself and uh, as you can see each of these you can each of these different options you could do independently so you can get the symbol you can tweak the symbol to look pretty much exactly what you want it to look like. You can rotate it. So I'll show the rotation a little bit here. Rotate it at about a 45 degree angle. Uh, I'll, I'll put it back to zero. Once you're done designing the symbol you're interested in, you can you can set the scale. I'm going to leave the scale at 1.0. And you can also set a transparency before you press this create selection button. So I'll press that and it's dropped the selection onto the map. If I want to create a second of exactly the same thing I can do that um, after I've merged the selection into the window. So I, I merge that and then I create a second selection It's exactly the same thing. I'll, I'll merge that and then I'll make the scale a little bit smaller create the selection as you can see it's uh, made the image size sl slightly smaller and I can also change the transparency so I can go to about a 50% transparency create the selection it's not transparent while it's still floating but once you merge it there you can see that it's it's kind of transparent I'll, I'll make the scale larger this will be a, a better illustration of the transparency uh, and click merge selection so there's that that's merged um, the program supports undo so at any given time you can see the number of undo levels and redo levels that you have so if I press on the undo button I can get rid of all of those <laughs> or I can press the redo button and get the symbols back uh, as an example of the rotation I'll rotate it I, I can show the rotation here but there's really no need to but when I create the selection you'll see it's the symbol is rotated and I can also delete the selection I can create it again and then merge it and when it's merged is when you see the uh, the transparency so that's an example of the unit symbols uh, you can create uh, unit symbols using the over 2500 unit stock unit symbols that are included and uh, what I'll do now is I will I will move on to lines and to create a, a line you would open the line designer and then you click on this uh, white picture box to the left here to select a stock line image and there's different lines representing many of the different NATO types for example I can find a line here for uh, let's see the double strand Constantino wire oh first of all let me make these a little bit smaller you can see I'll scroll through the what's available in terms of lines so you can get an idea of the different lines types that are included uh, barbed wire, minefields, Constantino wire, concertina wire I should say uh, and other types of lines but I'll start with the uh, see double strand concertina wire there it is so and you can you can change the color so I'll make this red actually that's a little bit bright so I'll make it about halfway 
and you can change the fill color if the if the symbol has any fill color this one does not but if the symbol has fill color you'll see it in yellow so there's there's an example of a line style this this uh, arrow that has a fill color and you can replace that with any color uh, that you want you can adjust the line thickness <clears throat> You can change the line scale so you can make it smaller or larger in the uh, the map image, and then you can change the the transparency. So to draw a line, once you have a line designed, I have this. It's a double strand concertina wire, and I've colored it red. It's designed. You can go back into your map window and then select the line checkbox, and this is going to be for a straight line. There's a freehand line. There's a straight line with text a freehand line with text and y you can also draw unit boundaries both straight and uh, freehand so since I selected the straight line I just draw a straight line and there there we have it there I have my line of concertina wire I can select merge selection and then I can continue drawing merge selection and I can I can draw a box here merge selection. So there we go. That's that's those are all straight lines. If I switch over to the free point freehand line, I can draw a circle and it should make a circle of concertina wire. There we go. Merge the selection and I can change the scale down to about 50 50% percent, and you can draw concertina can, concertina wire all you want. There's the scale is much smaller. Merge the selection, and uh, let's see if we go to the the text. There's a line with text designer. This one is similar to the line designer, but it's a little bit more complex in that you can you can add uh, some text, uh, left text, right text. This is useful if you're making a phase line. Once again, I'm clicking on the white picture box here in the upper upper left. And I'm just going to select the standard line here, so you can make your your uh, your left line a phase line name, right text. You can make it the same, and then there would be a center text. If I draw this line, just get an idea of what it looks like. The L is for the text on the left. The text on the center is uh, the B, and then the text on the right is on the right hand side. Uh, that's showing the zoom. I'm gonna go back to a one-to-one -one scale. Back to a zoom. You can zoom. You can zoom it smaller or or larger. Uh, I'll get rid of these selections that I've created and show you the unit boundary tool. Let's see a unit boundary. <clears throat> Normally, your unit boundaries are going to be. Uh, just straight lines. So I'll select the straight line and select the boundary symbol. I will select, select the regiment boundary symbol. And then you just type in your top text, your bottom text, what, whatever you want. You can color it any way you want. You can use the scroll bar to move uh, move the text to the left and to the right. You notice I'm, I'm using this scroll bar to move the top text left and to the right. You can make it smaller, make the text larger. You can select your font you can move it move it up and down and get it to look pretty much just exactly the way you want and then you can also scale it you can set the transparency uh, once I, once you've designed the, the unit boundary then you can draw it on the map so I'll just throw up that one's too long sometimes you can make a line that's it's just too long the program can't handle it okay merge the selection there's the unit boundary I'll switch back to the one-to-one -one scale and then draw draw something similar. There we go. There's the unit boundary. Merge the selection. And then likewise, you can switch over to a freehand version, and I'll draw a freehand unit boundary. So there you go, freehand unit boundary. I merged it, and then you can you can draw the unit boundaries very very easily. That's an example of the unit boundary. The, the final designer is the text annotation designer. And this one is very simple. You just uh, 
have an option for a single line of text or multiple line text lines of text and then once you're done typing in the text coloring it sizing it you just create click the create selection button and I should have a selection here there there it is so you can move your selections around all you have to do is click on part of it that that's visible and then once you've positioned it where you want it you just click merge selection I can uh, Let's see, I'll size the text here larger, and then you can rotate it, click Create Selection, and now I should have a selection. Oops, I mean, the drawing a line in the background there by accident. Um, let's see, Delete Selection, Create Selection again. I will move the line over here, click Merge Selection, okay. So that's that's the text annotation designer. You've seen the boundary designer. You've seen the uh, the unit symbol. Let's see where is it? The unit symbol designer. Uh, once you once you're done drawing or you're in the process of drawing, you can also use the image functions. You can adjust the brightness you can make it uh, brighter or darker I'll go ahead and make it a little darker uh, then I'll click the undo so get rid of that you can adjust the contrast you can adjust the gamma just to improve the old, if you're going to be taking your image and then putting it into a PowerPoint or something you can you can tweak the appearance and then you can also run certain functions halfway through for example you may want to grayscale the image before adding color symbols, so you can have a gray a grayscale background map, and then have color symbols just to, just to enhance the visibility of your uh, your unit symbols and other graphics over a, bl a black and white background. You can you can rotate the image. There it is rotated. I believe that was 35 degrees. You could. Later on, you could snatch out a portion of the image that you were interested in if, if you rotated it. You can resize a percentage larger or smaller. Let's see, I'll go smaller. So that, that, that's resized. Just it's, it's zoomed to fit the window. Um, can create a copy of the current sketch and then work on that independently. For example, if you had multiple sketches of similar things, you could... Um, work on it until you're done at a certain point until they branched off into different different parts that could each uh, have a starting point as the copy uh, and then you can also once you're, you've saved your image it saves it as a bitmap file but you can use the program to convert it into a into a JPEG if you're going to be emailing it or something like that uh, pretty much I've covered all the basics of the program it's very easy to use. All you have to be able to do is draw your lines, draw your unit boundaries, draw your symbols, and you can pretty much create uh, any sketch that you want. So uh, everything's been covered. Uh, thank you for watching.